The ocean has long provided humans with a bounty of food. There is an enormous amount of energy contained within the sea. Just think of those waves, relentlessly pounding on the beaches, and the movement of the tides that see vast volumes of water rise and fall, twice a day. Imagine if we could harness that energy to power our homes and cities. We have harnessed the power of the tides since at least the 6th century. Ancient Romans built tide mills, which used the ebbing and flowing of the tides to turn large water wheels, directing the energy through gears and stones to mill grain and corn. Tides are the regular rise and fall of ocean levels. They are caused by the interaction between the ocean and the gravitational pull of the moon and, to a lesser extent, the sun. In the same way Earth's gravity pulls the moon into its orbit around our planet, the moon's gravity also pulls it Earth. The gravitational pull of the moon weakens the further you are away from it. It's at its strongest at the side of Earth closest to the moon, weaker at Earth's core, and is at its weakest on the far side of Earth. This difference between the moon's gravitational force experienced across Earth is what creates the tides. Presently, we mainly use two main forms of tidal power technology to generate electricity, that are, freestanding tidal turbines and tidal barrages. In the case of wave energy extraction, ultimately, it is solar energy that starts the process, as it is differences in air temperature that cause wind. The energy that is transferred is solar radiation from the sun to the wind, and finally to waves in the ocean becomes concentrated at each step of the process. This is what makes wave energy such a good potential energy source. By using oscillating water columns, oscillating bodies or overtopping converters, we can harness the energy from waves. A beguiling array of wave energy devices, tidal turbines, and coastal barrage proposals are in the works to meet humans' energy needs, but the prospect of them competing with wind and solar power is a distant one indeed. That's because the realities of designing, building, and deploying these devices are incredibly complex. Ocean energy device costs remain extremely high because there are no benefits of manufacturing at scale. Each device has to be painstakingly designed, constructed, and tested in laboratories, then turned into prototypes to be tested in actual ocean waters. The motion of waves is affected by surface winds, weather, and local topography. Wave action is highly idiosyncratic and difficult to capture reliably. Furthermore, an ocean energy device that works great in one locale might be terrible in another, making it difficult to develop a standard design. Any large mechanical device placed into an active ocean ecosystem is going to be problematic. Spinning blades may injure or kill aquatic species. A coastal barrage for tidal energy might upset an entire estuarial ecosystem. Mechanical devices also can leak lubricants and emit noises that make trouble for fish and aquatic mammals. Devices strong enough to convert waves into energy typically require the strength of metal alloys. The trouble is that saltwater is so corrosive to tough, economical alloys like steel. That requires an extra level of care at the design, construction, and installation phases to fend off the effects of corrosion. Admittedly, there are many metallic alloys that have amazing corrosion resistance, but building entire energy arrays out of these metals will be inherently costly. Obviously, offshore wind will be the most productive marine energy source for the foreseeable future, but as long as the oceans keep moving, engineers, researchers, inventors, and entrepreneurs will be scouting for ways to bring tidal and wave energy into the mainstream.